Yeah, so we'll just start. So top 13s, number one. What, what are I you wanna, doing? Huh? What are you doing? What do you mean? We have to welcome everybody back to Big Junkie. Okay. So we'll start it up then. All right. Do it. You want to do it? You do it. Me? You do it. You do it. You're the man. You do it. Welcome to Big Chunky Entertainment. Top 13 video, numero uno. The first one. Are you ready for this? Oh, man. So we're going to do a lot of these. Top 13 Thursday. Yeah. We're top, doing it. Top 10 suck. Those <laughs> top 13s are way better than top 10s. They're okay. 30% larger. They are 30% it's larger. It's like the mega pack. It's like you get the third Reese's Cup. Oh, shit. For the same price. Yeah, it's, it's like the king size. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, we could do honorable mentions, but let's just throw them into the list. That's right. Number 13. Let's do it. And let's do it. Start so it. here's what we're going to do. What if, are we you doing? Haven't, if you haven't guessed by the title yet, Jim Steranko. Yes, the top 13 Jim Steranko covers. Let me. Legendary, legendary comic book artist. Let me just say, Steranko. <laughs> There's only one way to say Steranko. You're right. And that is to do a dramatic pause and then. Steranko. You have to say his name as he signs his name. Yeah, we're going to do a, uh, a deep dive into Jim Steranko at some point, and today is not that day. But today what we're going to do, on the heels of the announcement that he is going to be doing a private signing Ooh. with CGC, I thought it'd be, hey, what a wonderful excuse to do a bunch of Jim Steranko covers. Yeah, I agree. So, so what I wanted to do for the first top 13 list in true Jim Steranko fashion, is to go ahead and show the 13 covers that I think would be the best to send over to CGC to have his little name slapped right. on it. Right. If you know anything about Jim Steranko and his convention prowess. Oh, I do. Do they? I don't know if they do or not. We've been to three or four conventions with Jim Steranko there. I have been to two. You've been to two, so I've been to... Th I've only been to three. Three. Nope, I've no, been to four. four. Yeah. I've been to four. Um... I, if he's within driving distance, <laughs> or sometimes even, sometimes even not. But yeah. well, you know, we've we've driven to him every time. Yeah, it's uh, it's rough. Any either way, he's one to go see, and I'll go ahead and preface this by saying I refuse to send something away via mail yeah. to get his name on it because you have to get that experience. I want to feel it in person. He gives you. He wants to feel you. Right, he wants to literally feel you. Yes. And again, we'll talk about some Jim Steranko stories. We got some good ones in the future. So anyway, yeah, let's not ramble on. Yeah, let's let's, let's get, get into right the into list. It. Top thirteen. My top thirteen Jim Steranko covers. Yeah. To send away to CGC to get graded. And are they might not be the most iconic covers, but Absolutely. there are some very iconic covers in there. Yes. Uh, he there are no there's no choice. I mean, he yeah. was an icon. That's true. And here he's an icon for a reason, and we're going to see some of those reasons. Right now. Right now. Number 13. What do we got? Start number 13. We're going to go with Captain America number 113. Captain America 113. I happen to... And yeah. I've got a few of these here on the show. I've got about eight or nine of the 13 we're going to go through. And I'll pass them to you, Casey, so you can yeah, marvel dude. at them. So Absolutely. Captain America 113, one of his iconic covers. He only did, I think, three Captain America covers. I believe so. In the late 60s. And this is the last one. I think he did 110, 111, and 113. Yeah, I don't know why he skipped 112. I don't know. But it just so happens yeah, that's a good, I like that, that there is a chance all three of those Captain America covers bank the list. But I love this cover, the green background, the the gravestone, the the yeah, memorial. That, that dark green is not something that you see a lot no. in covers, especially back in the nope. day. And we'll see on a couple of these covers, he loved to put moons in the background. Yeah, he did. He loved the moon. He loves it. Everything yeah. was at night. He's very much like a DC comic book movie. Everything happens at night with Jim Steranko <laughs> covers. So Captain America 113, beautiful cover. He signed mine in blue. It goes perfectly right in front of the moon. So mm -hmm. that's the cool thing, too. I, will do, I do want to mention very quickly, on these CGC signings, they're having you send the books and basically taping off the windows. So you can pick and choose oh, really? where he's going to sign. Oh, so that's, cool. that's really cool. Because that's a, you know one of the things, if you get a lot of comic books autographed, mm. it can make or break the cover if you put it over top somebody's face it just yeah like, oh, if he's he signed really over captain if he signed over the damn logo right there and over yeah. overshadowing captain america's statue that would have been something yep so there you go 113 is a good start yeah all right number 13 what do we got well or, number that 12 was, that was number 12 what do we got <laughs> number 12 on the list i do not have i uh, do not 
own yet. Give me two days, and I will own it. It's on oh, the way. Wow. It is Supernatural Thrillers numero one. Okay. And, and that is the one with... It. Is it. Yes, it. the green thing that looks like Swamp Thing. Yes. Okay. And it's on the screen right now. Take a look at it. But you got this... Well, yeah, it's kind of like a man thing, Swamp Thing thing. Yeah, what well, it is it. You know, back in the 70s, I guess, they just called anything it. There's a lots of it's the, running around. Yeah. And this is one of the it's. In the Supernatural thing. Thrillers, it's a number one issue. It's really cool. Again, the creepy moon in the background. Yeah. And oh, the, yeah. And the hazy sky. Yeah, hazy sky. Misty um, sky. This is... The next time I get to meet Jim Starenko, and hopefully I do, it's definitely one I'm going to take with me to get autographed. Yeah. And that's number 12. Good. All right. We're going like to move it. on. Number 11. Another number 11. one. What we got? That I don't own. Ooh. A fairly new comic. We won't see too many modern comics on this list, but this one is one of them. It is Batman, black and white. Uh, yes. Second volume. Mm-hmm. Came out found in the mid-2000s. Yeah. And it is his... Uh, I, I call it a sketch cover. It's very charcoalish. Again, it, yeah, I was gonna say it looks like charcoal. I don't have it in front of me. It's on the screen. It's just listen. Batman's awesome. Jim yeah. Steranko's awesome. There's so many cool Batman covers. It's you know, yeah. I'll take any cool Batman cover. Yeah, and this is one of those. It's it's really charcoalish, black and white. I mean, it'd, be, it'd be look gorgeous with just about any color autograph. Yeah. So that is number eleven. That's a number on the eleven. List. All right. So we're in the top ten now. We're in the traditional top ten. What do we got? Now we're in the top ten. So this is a this is an iconic cover. It is Strange Tales number one sixty seven. I do own it. Good. He has thanked me personally. The really for bringing this to his attention. Is that it right? is the iconic cover of Nick Fury running around with his jelly like putty legs. Yeah, all the true people, Jim Steranko fashion. All the people in this cover are running so unnaturally. Yeah, yeah it's just, amazing. Very surreal. It just lends to his surrealism that he put into comics in the in the sixties. Yeah, GI Joe over there is pretty happy. But about yeah, it. beautiful cover. Yeah, here's my copy, and that is the number ten number ten book on the list. I like it. I like it. What do we got for number nine? Number nine. We're going to delve into his. Just like with Captain America, he did just a, less than a handful of X-Men covers. And we're going to go mm-hmm. with number nine on the list is X-Men number 51, where you see this crazy picture. I don't have this sign yet either. This crazy picture of Eric the Red. And again, yeah, what is people that? just terrified of what they're seeing. And I can see why. I mean, this this could, this Yeah, wouldn't you be terrified this guy, if you saw this? Good this God. guy looks mad. And this Shadow looks like a cat. He is very angry at something. What is if Shadow have eyes? There is a cat shadow on there, and I don't know why. I don't understand. I don't understand this cover, but I love it. But I love the color. I love the the colors of it. It just yeah, yeah, you know, just kind of bounces off the page. Yeah, I don't see too many like dark blue backgrounds either. No. Nope. Yeah, that's odd. No, not anymore. No. But I love the uh, the colors of it. Like I said, it's just very vibrant. We'll talk about another X Men comic in a minute and the significance of it. Yes. As far as Jim Steranko is concerned on the list, but yes. not yet. No. Number what, eight. What we're going to do right now is go into number eight, and this is another comic I do not have. We This is our Ooh. first. Oh, no. This is our first Nick Fury comic. It is number four, and it, I don't have it. So, again, it's on the screen. It is the black background with the swirly. It's very reminiscent of Strange Tales 167, where you've got Nick Fury in the foreground running. Yeah. Kind of cockeyed or whatever <laughs> yeah. but it's another one of those you know white background covers from the 60s are just awesome to get signed you're just perfectly yeah yeah there's just, so much open room for people to yeah, if you sign can anything throw on some there. color onto it if you yeah. do something other than like a black marker or something like anything with blue or mm-hmm. red will look gorgeous on this cover so yeah. I, I chose that one just because it's iconic and i think it would look very very pretty with jim steranko's name on there so number seven number seven on the list is Another Nick Fury cover. Back-to-back Nick Furies. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorites. Issue number three. I don't have this sign yet either. This is what I call the Hounds of the Baskerville cover. It reminds me of a Edgar Allan Poe story. <laughs> That's this beautiful very specific. Wow. Orange and red background. Again, with the moon in the back. Mm-hmm. This hound jumping over a gravestone. He loves gravestones, too. Same kind of monument as uh, Cap 113. But this is another beautiful one that I would love for him to sign, maybe across the moon, maybe in the Yeah, in I the love this kind there. of... I love graveyard imagery. 
Again, and I think that this this works really good. I, I really like this. It reminds me of Dracula. Or Gargoyles. Gargoyles? Gargoyles. Okay. Well, remember yeah. Gargoyles? That, well, yeah, I remember. I remember Gargoyles. It reminds me of Gargoyles. Well, in the 90s, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, That's what it reminds uh, again, me of. Don't ask me why. Beautiful cover. I'll, uh, gosh, I've got a lot of stuff to get autographed. I'm going to drop a, yeah, some you're, money. Yeah, you better save up for that. I need to start selling kidneys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's what we that. For number six, number six on the list, I do have, and again, I've got it personalized. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, see what I mean? Yep, it is Captain America number one eleven. Again, the white background, which is kind of still whitish. My copy is at least, but just, I mean, maybe more than any comic on the list. This is just one to have autographed. There's so much yeah. open space yep. in the background. It's all white. This is the one. Very mm-hmm. displayable. I would. I like it. I mean, if you had a high grade copy of that one, signed and slabbed, CGC. Oh, it'd oh be just, mm-hmm. It's just made to be a wall book, and that is number six. Number six. So we're cracking, we number five. Cracking the top five. Top five. Number five. Boom, boom. I'm sorry. We're, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> we're going. I don't know. We're going straight into. Supernatural thrillers yet again. Supernatural thrillers, who would have thunk it? Now, I've owned this comic book for about nine hours. What? Nine hours. Oh. When I was researching the list, I came across this, didn't in, didn't know it was a thing. But I have an affinity for The Invisible Man. Okay. I love it. I don't know why. I, I liked the old movie. I love the concept of the Invisible Man. I didn't know he did the cover, but this is Supernatural Thrillers number two featuring the Invisible Man, and I just absolutely love yeah, the cover. Yeah, I love, I love this kind of imagery. I don't know what it is, but it's just the well, I, the, I love, the kind of gothic, almost. I love the the thriller, chiller stories yeah, of the seventies. Yeah, I love like Universal monster stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. So this is just a perfect perfect storm. You throw Jim Steranko's art on top of it, and I just want it. I want it autographed, and it's going to happen. And Good. I think you should, too. It would look pretty. Oh, yeah. Everything on this list is going to look pretty. Yeah. This so should, that's number this five. This should be called the 13 Ooh. prettiest comic list. So number four. Number four. We're going to get into this one real quick. X-Men. Number 50. X-Men 50. Okay. X-Men number 50, the first appearance of Polaris, the daughter of Magneto. Yes. Loved the color scheme. Again very with the green. Very rare dark, color scheme. Dark green and yellow. Green and yellow. Just, you know, Polaris hovering there in the foreground. Mm-hmm. Everybody frightened to death of, of what they're seeing at the bottom. That's true. Just. They are scared for no reason, aren't they? Iconic X-Men cover. It's fantastic. Oh, there's a reason. There's a good reason. Yeah, I'm sure there is. I didn't um, it. But as you can see, on my copy, Steranko autographed right there over the logo. That's fine. And of course, there was a reason. There was a reason. Because until this issue here, number 50, the logo for X-Men was still the original from X-Men number one. Oh, that's the one where they changed the logo. This or is where the he one, changed the logo. Or at least he claims, I'm sure it's true, that he had had enough of it. This logo was a thing of the past, and they needed something fresher. Mm-hmm. So he designed this logo, which is the logo that everybody recognized. Yeah, everybody because recognizes since this it. issue, yep. it has been the X Men logo. That's right. It was the X Men logo on the animated cartoon series of the of the nineties, and it has been the X Men logo ever since on every title. Yes. So this one's iconic because it's the first appearance. It's a beautiful cover, and it's the first time we see that logo. So when he signed this, he tells me the story about how he's never seen a nickel from Marvel. For coming out with this <laughs> great logo. <laughs> so, God. if not him, then who would have the right to scribble their name over top that logo? You know uh, what? So he He's says, right. and of course, in, in Steranko fashion, he was like, so, may I? And I'm like, I can't tell you. I can't tell you anything, no, right, yeah, Jim no. Steranko. Yes, sign wherever you want. Do me the honor. Yes. So that's Max Men 50, and that was number four. That's a, that's a questionable number four. I'd put that upwards, but... I don't own as many James Stranko comic books as you do. Well, there's three other ones. I don't own any James Stranko comic books. There's three other ones. All right, top three. Number three is the final Captain America on the list. Okay. My favorite, the very first comic I ever personally got autographed. Uh, number 110, you've got this insane Captain America Hulk oh, cover yeah. with Hulk busting God, I through. I love that Hulk. 
Very looking very monstrous. Yeah, he is going nuts. Like I said, looking very Godzilla like. Like he is just like he's out to get you. Yeah, who's the who's the Bucky? Person that isn't? Oh, that's Bucky. Okay. Yeah. Bucky is running for his life and as well he should be. Yeah, Bucky is dipping out of there. He doesn't want any he's part of getting it. Getting out of there. He shouldn't want any part of it. No, why is Hulk the size of a building? He's because Jim Steranko said he's going to be the size of the building. Okay. And so he made him the size of the building. <laughs> he did. And it's awesome. True that. Fantastic cover. He signed it for me. And that was the first comic I ever got signed by him. And it's That's number awesome. three on the list. Mm hmm. Number two? Number two. Okay. Okay. So I see you picking up this cover. Hmm. And I recognize this cover. And everybody yes. recognizes this cover because Maybe. it's so pretty. It's it so is. pretty and it's so iconic that I would yeah. almost put this as number one. It was. It almost it, listen my top three. Mm-hmm. I, I was well, actually my top four. I was it was it was I was splitting hairs with them. Okay, fair but enough. But this one made number two. It is Nick Fury, Agent of Shield, number seven, the final Nick Fury book on the list, mm-hmm. and it is just. You, oh gosh, you're right. It's so good. It's the Salvador Dali. Yeah, the Salvador Dali one. Very surrealistic. Does it have anything to do with the actual story that happens I couldn't, in, this, in this book? I, I, there's not a chance. Have you chance. never read this? No. Oh, okay. No, you can't read Nick Fury comics from the 60s. What the fuck ever? You can't? Well, I mean, you could. I mean, yeah. I mean. Yeah, I don't want to say that. No, I have not read it. Um, I can't imagine the storyline has anything to do with anything that's going God, on on the yeah, cover, I but I hope it does. Oh, yeah. If it did, it'd be incredible. There will come a time. I don't know how you can make a story out of this. But <laughs> there will come a time in the near future that I do read it. Um... Because I'm going to read all of them. Yeah. But, again, just in in every way, this is the most Steranko cover. Yeah, with, that's true. With the the new innovations he brought to comics in the late 60s, this just kind of brings them all together. The, something like this had never been done before Yeah. in comics. It's like, how this sells a comic, I'm not sure. I don't even... How wanna, it sells a comic? I don't what even do want to know. Like, in 1968 or whenever this came out, I just I can't imagine what, what kids were thinking. Yeah, because they they were used to reading speech bubbles and thought bubbles on their covers, and then you come out with this, and you're like, what? You're like, what is, where is this guy at? Yeah. So, again, beautiful cover. It makes number two on the list, which leaves only one. Number one. Before I get to number one. Is this your favorite? This is my favorite Jim Steranko cover. It's also my favorite cover of this character. That's fair. My favorite character growing up as a child. Okay. Because of the TV show. Um, I was a fan of this character before I was a, years before I was a fan of comic books mm-hmm. in general. So it's, this has a near and dear place in my heart. But without further ado, number number one. one on the list, if you haven't already guessed, if you're a Steranko fan, you know what this is. And it is Hulk special slash annual. Number one, it is the famous cover mm-hmm. of him bearing the weight yes. of his own logo. Yes. King size special. They, and again, this is king size. This is a it is book. it is a uh, square bound book. Yes, it is. It is the Hulk. So you said that this Nick Fury Agent of Shield comic was the most Jim Steranko comic that is yeah. out there. The, yeah. the most Jim Steranko cover. Now I would argue that this is because he did a bunch with logos, or he he at least changed the the uh, the X Men logo yeah, to I something mean, that's different. But I don't know that that was like when did this come out. When was that issue? What year? These are all late 60s. I don't know. Late I don't, 60s? Yeah, I don't know. 68, so, I believe. Yeah, like I would assume that back in the day, the, the the logo for the comic was one of the things that was just like, it was pretty standard yeah. on every issue that you bought. So whenever you changed it up, it's kind of like, what? Yeah, no, it was cool and, and would have to do a little bit of research on it, but I don't know of too many comics. I think your point being that they messed with the logo. They incorporated the logo into the Yeah, they the incorporated art. the logo into the, yeah. That exactly. didn't happen very often. This might be the first case of it, probably the most famous case of it. It's happened uh, a few other times in Hulk comics. Tom, mm-hmm. Todd McFarlane did a, like almost an homage to this, so to speak, oh, yeah. during his run, during the Hulk. Huh. Um, but yeah, no, it's a great cover. Again, it's just like primary colors all throughout you got green and purple and orange and red and yellow it's just a gorgeous again one of those covers that just jumps off the page yeah it does he autographed mine in green there by his knee mm-hmm. but i mean just it's gorgeous it's a gorgeous cover um maybe my favorite cover maybe my favorite cover of all time really i'm not 100 percent sure of that that's high praise but it might be my favorite mm. and if i had another copy of it i would certainly send it off to cgc 
Because again, this is one of that's one of those books that I would love to get slabbed. I can't get it slabbed now. It's already got his name on it. Yeah, I mean, and you could CGC would you get that stupid frown upon it. No, um, <clears throat> but it, if I had another copy, I would. It, it, it'd be about out of all of this list, I would almost be enticed to get that one witnessed and that's slabbed fair. because it's just like, you know it's you gorgeous. Could you could send it to CBCS. I could. I can get a verified signature. Yeah, you could. I might. Mine is it's not a very clear case. Mine's a mid grade, um, maybe a five. This is a pretty enough book. It's pretty for you to get it slabbed and hang it on the wall somewhere. I heard that a lot. It's pretty. It is pretty. This is not the most thirteen most pretty covers, but we did say pretty um, a lot. Are we wrong? No. No. No, we're not wrong, and we're very rarely ever wrong. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> what? But okay. Feel free to argue with us. But yeah, please. That's the first ever top 13, the top 13 books that I think would be excellent candidates to send away to CGC, have him put his name on there, get him back, and just yeah. maybe spread them out around the table. Mm -hmm. Maybe. You know, just you and these slabbed books with Jim Steranko's name on it. You know, maybe dim the lights a little bit. Just look at it. You know, have just a little sip of it. a sip of a beverage mm -hmm. and enjoy the evening. I However, agree. you enjoy evenings with slabbed comics. It's not my business. <laughs> no, you, you do whatever you want with your comics. It's not my but... business. Of course, there are several more Jim Steranko comics that we don't have here and we didn't even mention. So let us know what your favorite yeah. Jim Steranko comic books are. Of course, he had a billion different covers. They're all great in their own right. And we would like to know. Yes. Maybe there's something that we missed out there. Could have missed something. Please leave a comment down below and tell us what your favorite Jim Steranko comic book is. And of course, like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Subscribe for more of this kind of content, we are doing top 13 Thursdays every Thursday. Yes. So be prepared for that, and we'll see you on the next one. See you.